Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above every other name we gather here this evening, God, we just thank you, Lord, for this day, for this Advent season, and Lord, for the promises that you have made, and Lord, we thank you, God, that you're not a man that you should lie, nor that you should change your mind. You are the same today, you were the same yesterday, you'll always be the same, Lord. God, we're so grateful for that. Thank you, Lord, for providing a place for us to gather, and Lord, for giving us the joy of this season. We thank you in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen, Amen. amen. <clears throat> God keeps his promises. Um, last week, as, as we preached on Sunday, one of the things I had closed with uh, was the third part of the, of the message had to do with God's will for you. His will for you, his will for me. His will is that you would be saved. How is it that many people, that's where they stop? Yeah. They, they just stop right there. I'm saved, okay, so I'm just going to wait for the death angel. And when the death angel comes, I'm going to heaven. Well, it's, that's fine, and hopefully you're secure in that, but there's something more God. Jesus said, I came to give you life and that more abundantly, so he didn't come just to let you wait for the you know, for, well, the good old gospel ship uh, has more to do with you living in this world and facing the trials of life and being a blessing to others as God is blessing you. You know, the Bible says to forgive and, and it shall be given, forgiven of you, but he also says to give and it shall be given. Isn't it interesting? Mm -hmm. You give to get, to give to get. You get because that you get to. You, it's a privilege. It's, it's not just something that, you, uh, that, that you're owed but, so we know that we're saved, and he says, my will is for you to be saved. That uh, is that his will that no one should perish, but everybody should come to a saving knowledge of his son Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. So they would all be saved. Um, God doesn't always get what he wants. He could take what he wanted, but he doesn't. But he does take and protect what is his. So that brings us to his other will for us, and that is that his will for us is to be secure. Amen? To be secure. Um... And that, that has various meanings. Um, I, and I think I probably spoke on this before, and I'll speak on it a little bit again tonight. It, is what you desire, is that God's will for your life, or is it what you will? And when you pray, are you praying your will, or are you praying God's will? So, you know, when you, when you do start to hear God's voice, it becomes a whole lot more evident that he's got bigger plans than you ever thought of. The Bible talks about that his thought for us, his plans for us, is greater than anything we could ever think of. And so we, we are saved, we're secure in our fact that we are saved. But if you're secure, rather than being insecure, but rather than be skittish, rather than being, uh, you know, the Bible says you have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind of love. Uh, how are you doing with those gifts through that security? And the, the last part of this, and this all culminates to this, his will is that you would serve, that you would serve him, you would serve in his church. You would serve your your fellow man. Um, sometimes you would serve when perhaps it doesn't seem like it serves you. Oh, wait a second. That's it. It doesn't always serve you. And when we come to a place in our walk with the Lord, we realize that, that what did Jesus say? He said, I did not come to be served, but I came to serve. And if we follow his example, most of the time, um, statistically speaking, most of us have come to the Lord expecting him to do something because he's already done something, but we're expecting to receive something because he's already promised something. <laughs> Are you getting this? But once you've received what he promised, what are you going to do with it? It's a gift that's meant to, to give and keep on giving. So tonight I want to talk to you about, about those promises. And, and I mean, we, we could go down and I, we, uh, I think a few weeks ago, um, I said uh, I was looking into the promises of God and I, I, I was... Doing the you know doing a Google search, doing the search on the, all sorts of resources, I thought, okay, over seven thousand promises, I'm in trouble. I can't really list them all. So let me give you five promises that God has provided for us. Um, and if you haven't turned your Bible yet to Second uh, Peter chapter three, uh, th those there's a couple of verses there we're going to focus on. But there are five things that I want to share with you tonight that God has uh, that that He's promised to those who trust Him. Jeremiah chapter 20, uh, 17, 7 says this. It says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Did you notice that? Blessed is the man who, who, who trusts in the Lord, 
whose trust is the Lord. Jeremiah 17.7 Although trusting God is easier said than done, the scripture reveals that doing so has got some great benefits. Some of the things that we get from God, and I want to give you the benefits. First off, clarity and direction. I just don't know what to do. Anybody? You ever have days like that? I, I mean, that, listen, my whole life is filled with, I don't, I, I don't know what to do until I get there. And even after I get there, I'm going to find out what I'm going to need to do. And, and I have to ask, I'll say, I, I mean, in the last few days, and actually several weeks, I've been going here, going there, and I said, Lord, give me not just the knowledge, but the wisdom. And the, the knowledge to, to know how to do and the, and the wisdom to know when to do it. So, in, in one sense, I'm actually identifying with him, so I'm, I'm identifying the fact of who I am in him. And that's kind of what this said here when we just read that scripture, you know, whose trust is in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Did you get that? Your trust is not just in the Lord, it is the Lord. And, and, and he's not one that he, he should lie or, or that he should change his mind. So in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. I, I don't have time to share all the things that's happened. And, and if I did, some of you wouldn't even, uh, really couldn't even identify with it. I say this quite often, and maybe you'll get this. Uh, well, actually, I'll just say this. So I, I say this quite often in, in the circle of the people that I work with. Most civilians have no clue what makes this all happen. Most, most, I'll say most civilians don't know what it really took to make this coffee cup, much less what make that, make that coffee that's in that cup. And we don't even give it a second thought. Most civilians don't know the one who made everything. See, here's the deal. Once you come to Christ and he's in you, you, uh, huh, you've just been enlisted. You're in the Lord's army. You're no longer a civilian. Amen? And, but what happens is that as a, as, as, as a servant in, or a soldier in the Lord's army, we're going to be told what to do when we are to do it. So I said, God, I, I, I need to know, I need to have this knowledge. Uh, and, and the, you know, you, I, I heard somebody say recently, you know, timing is everything. And there's, there's a lot of truth to that. You may, have, you may have acquired all this knowledge over your whole lifetime. But wait, here's one. Let me give you a, a, a real simple thing to think about. Have you, ever, have you ever told yourself or heard someone else say, I wish I knew this when I was younger? Yes. Okay. Would it have really done you any good? Not. You can have all the knowledge, but if you lack the wisdom. The idea here is to have direction. And God says, I'm going to give you direction. I'm going to, I'm going to make things clear for you. You know, the, the, it's, it's wonderful what the Lord says because he says, he, you know, he knows the path that we take and he guides our steps. Well, does he guide your steps or are you still the master of your own destiny? So he also gives you something else. Another promise is, I'm going to give you peace. In Isaiah right. chapter 26, verse 3, he says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because, why? He trusts you. You can only stay in perfect peace as long as you trust God. Don't lean on your own understanding. Wait, I already said that, didn't I? You're leaning on your own understanding. And here's what you need to do. How about we humble ourselves in the sight of God and say, okay, God, I really don't know what's going on here. Or maybe, Lord, I think I know what's going on, but I don't know what to do. Wait, knowing, where you, knowing who you are, when you know where you stand, he will lead you and guides you in what you should do. Which brings us to another thing. So the thing that we have to understand, go back to the thing. He wants us to be saved. He wants us to be secure. So he's promised what? Security. Amen? Security. I mean, that promise that we received from God when we place our trust in him, Psalm 56, 3 and 4 says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. And in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? You know, when we place our trust in God and not in the things or in the events of this world, then we're going to have security of knowing that we are covered by him. You like to sing that, covered in the blood, covered, covered, covered. Don't you love to sing that, but you don't trust it? 
We say it, but we really haven't. You haven't. In, you really haven't given the thought. Why? Because I'll go back to that first thing. Well, we come under the blood for salvation, and that's sometimes where it stops. But well, wait, no, that blood, had, there's more power in that blood than just to get you a, a way to heaven. That's great. How many of you want to go to heaven? That's great. I, I, I want to go to heaven. But there's more to the blood. There's more to the grace of God than just that. And so he gives us that security, amen? Psalm 146, verse 3 warns us. He says, uh, put not your trust in princes or in the sons of man uh, in whom there is no salvation. Proverbs 11, 28 says, Whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like the green leaf. I kind of like that. Amen? So he's promised security. And if you've got security, listen, until you, until you get this, I'm going to say, I'm going to put it like this. Until you, re, you really understand and, and grasp these promises, that he's promised direction and clarity. How many of you want to see what God's doing and, and you know, so I say, you want, you, want, you want to hear God? You want to hear from God? You want to hear his voice? You got to calm yourself. That means don't be leaning on your own understanding. Quit trying to think. Of, I mean, it's okay to try to, you know, work some things out. But quit trying to overwork everything. But calm yourself. And then to individuals, say, all right, God, I need, to see what, I need to see what you're saying. I want to know where you're going. What did Moses say? Lord, I want to see your face. God says you can't, but I'll, I'll show you where I'm going, and I'll show you where I've been. You know, that's, that's, that's giving you vision. And for lack of vision, people perish. How many of you want vision so you don't perish? Amen? Amen. Yeah. And, of course, that peace and that security. And once you've got those things, when, when, when you realize that God has manifest these gifts in your life, that's when you get the victory. See, because if you don't have these other things, do you really have victory? Then you really walk in victory. If you, have no, if you have no direction in your life, if there's no peace in your life, if you're always afraid, there's no security, how can you say, well, I've got victory? Here's the thing. Everybody on the face of the planet, there's a wolf at the door. There are bills that have to be paid. Amen? Nobody's getting any younger. <laughs> but we have victory. As we trust the Lord, he not only provides that security, he gives you victory. And, and often we we need to realize something and we need to understand how to pray. It will change how you pray. It will change how you face your problems. Listen to Psalm 20, verse 7 and 8. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. Now notice, I'm going to rise and stand upright, and I'm not going to be leaning on my own understanding. If I'm going to lean, I'm going to lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm feeling a song coming on. Because of that fifth promise that he's promised to you, and here's the thing, you, you can't have this last promise. You can't appropriate it for yourself. You can't get it for yourself anyway until you've received these other promises and, and, and actually trust in that God wants you to have these things. Um <coughs> Well, I've got joy, 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 joy. Where? Where? Well, I've got joy, 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 joy. Joy, joy. You guys sound like a balloon that just lost its air. All right, everybody take a deep breath. That's why we were doing that a moment ago. <laughs> Sister Liz is going to choke herself. Well, I've got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Well, I've got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart today. Now, think about this. If you truly have the joy of the Lord, that means you receive these promises. And you believe these promises. And you trusted the one who's made these promises to you. Amen? In, uh, in Psalm 13, it says this, But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My, listen, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. And it, when you get to a place where you can rejoice in salvation, it'll change your prayer life. 
You'll pray for somebody else, but you won't be praying about their sin. You'll be praying about their deliverance. You'll be praying about their peace. You'll be praying about their victory. You'll be praying about their security. And you'll be praying about them coming to a knowledge of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Before I get excited in here and have to start all over. <laughs> so that kind of brings us to where I wanted to speak tonight. Because have you ever prayed for something? Have you ever prayed for something? Yeah. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Because if you've never prayed for anything, this isn't going to work. You know, I can't. But anyway, but have you ever prayed for something? And, and, and that something that you prayed for had, had an, an absolute immediate need. Now, the answer came, but it seemed like it took forever. Yeah. Still waiting. Still waiting. Still you know. You can't rush God. No. He'll answer his time. You just have to wait. Amen? He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Amen. Does anybody know that song? Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> so, <coughs> things just don't happen when we expect them. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen when we don't expect it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and it happens yeah. both ways. I, I received some blessings, didn't expect that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I mean, we might experience doubt, and we might even try to, watch this, <laughs> you might even try to control things on your own when you don't see God at work yeah. in your time frame. You say, well, you know what? Uh, maybe, I, you know, I, I think God is holding back on this answer because he wants me to do something more. You remember what I preached a few weeks ago? Did you know you can be so busy? doing work, working in the kitchen, working uh, work and doing a Sunday school class. You could be leading a choir. You could be preaching. You could be all, doing all this stuff and still be far removed from God because you're too busy. You're caught up in these things. God didn't answer. God didn't do. So you thought you should. Now, this is going to leave you a little bit uh, wanting tonight because it's going to leave you needing to pray for God to give you some direction. <coughs> Some clarity, amen? So that you can have peace about things. But when we read, well, well Peter tells us that, uh, that, well, first off, we see that the passing of time is very different to God than it is to us. God is not limited by the hours, by the day, by the months, by the years. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. This is the text. Because God says, a day is like what? And a thousand years? Let me think. Anybody got a calculator? I'm going to check that out, okay? One year, 300, wait, a thousand, wait a second, wait, no. You need to understand what he's saying. It doesn't make any difference to God. A day is like a year, a year is like a, it doesn't matter. Because he goes on to say, that God is not slow. Say not slow. Not He's not slow in keeping his promises. As we might understand. Slowness. Now it may seem like time is going by slowly. It may seem like our situation. Our circumstances are, are dragging on. And things aren't changing. But in reality God may be doing something that we just simply can't see with our own perspective, with our own eyes, with our own, within our own time frame. Mm -hmm. I, I still laugh because, you know, I'm half the man I once was. I'm a has-been, so to speak. But you know what's good about the has-been? I have been. Mm -hmm. And I will be. Hello? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. I didn't say I was done. But I, I, I still have to laugh. I heard someone say it again today. I was on a job site, and I heard this guy talking to another guy and talk about going to the gym. He says, well, I, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to get big like it's going to happen overnight. <laughs> How many know that things just don't happen like that? And there are things that might happen in your, in your life that seems like it came in an instant, but if, if when you look back, Good, bad, or indifferent. Sometimes you find out, wait a minute, the reason it happened when it happened was 
And actually, it didn't happen by accident. It's because of the, the, the choices I have made, the path that I've walked, the direction that my life has taken. And, and, and listen, maybe I didn't have vision for my life. Maybe I didn't have peace. Maybe I didn't have, maybe I didn't trust God the way I should. Maybe, oh, wait a second. Maybe I don't trust him because I don't know him. See, God tells us that he is patient with us. <laughs> Did you hear that? <clears throat> How many of you want to be his patient? <laughs> but God, I need a little ER right now. I need a little bit of emergency help. In the Bible, you see stories. You remember, you remember there was a there was there was a <laughs> there was a, a war going on, and there was this person that prayed, and and help didn't show. He, and what you found out was the angel said, "I heard your call a long time ago, but I was detained." Mm -hmm. The point was, though, I heard the pray God heard your prayer, and there was already help on the way. It just hadn't arrived yet, but you still survived long enough. You made it to where the help came. Yeah. Amen. So He tells us to be that He's patient. Look at, look at verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness or slowness. But he is what? Long-suffering. He's patient towards us. Not willing, listen, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So in those times, those moments, maybe even days or weeks, when we feel like God is not responding to our circumstances the way we would like him to? He may be showing his patience. He may be showing us his patience because he shows patience with people that he so dearly loves. Why did not he rescue mankind earlier on? Why did he wait for those hundreds and thousands of years? Why did, the, why did Israel have to suffer so long before the arrival of their Messiah? Because they were not ready. You see, what, well, let me ask this question here. What do you think that God's ultimate goal is for us? What is his ultimate goal? Hold on, huh? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right akin to what we're talking about. What, what did the writer say? But to know him. But to know him and the fellowship of his suffering. But he, his ultimate goal is for us to know him. Not necessarily know the answer to our prayer. But to know him. And you know what? I believe God. Say that with me. I believe God. Now, now convince me. <laughs> I believe God. <laughs> I believe God and I believe that he answers prayers. his prayers or our prayers. I believe God and that he keeps his promises. And I believe that when he keeps his promises, that his promises are perfectly timely. When Jesus came, read it in the book of Luke, in the fullness of time. Christ came in the fullness of time what a promise <coughs> Hebrews chapter 11 I mention this all the time in Hebrews chapter 11 there was generation after generation after generation of, of men and women who they believed God never received the promise but they believed God anyway hmm what a reward huh so I believe that they must have had some direction they must have had some peace they had security. They most definitely had victory. Why? Because they believed God. Right. They trusted God. Somebody say amen. amen. So the question is to ask yourself tonight, and maybe you already have over the, over, the, over the next couple of days, you know, when have you seen God keep his promises? And are you still waiting to hear an answer from God? Maybe in some particular circumstance like this one. I mean, not really, right? You probably, you you know what? I, I believe that the answer is on the way. I believe that. Listen, I believe God's promises, yes and amen, to the glory of God. Every promise of God is exactly that. 
yes and an amen to the glory of God through Christ Jesus who is in us. So what do you think that God is teaching you as you wait in his timeline? What's he teaching you? Patience. Patience. Oh, patience. Patience. It's interesting how it is that we want things so quickly, and there's nothing wrong with wanting them, but the great, what, what should be your greatest desire? What should you want the most? You want a relationship with your Heavenly Father. Amen? Is that not right? We want to have that relationship. And so what we do is through all of this, we end up having a time where we have to start learning to lean on Jesus. Well, what does that even look like in your life? Are you still leaning on your own <coughs> understanding? Or are you actually learning to lean on Jesus? And you're going to need some patience. But know this. His grip will never fail. Oh, you can turn loose. That's all right. Turn loose. And trust him. You've heard it said, let go and let God, right? What does it look like? Turn loose of that thing that you're trying to control and manipulate. Turn loose of it. Turn loose and let God. Turn loose and... Huh, let me tell you, whatever you, what, remember what I said a while back? Um, whatever you desire, you acquire, whatever you acquire, you remember that? You're going to have responsibilities to take care of what you've acquired. Yeah. And many times we think we've got a handle on something, when in fact it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Let's go to the Lord of Prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We ask tonight, God, that you would help, Lord, to, uh, uh, to reveal your will to us. And, and that, God, that we would learn to lean on you. That, Lord, that we would come to understand that what the writer said when he says all things work together. Lord, how can things work together when we're not working together with you? The events themselves may not, may not work together. But Lord, when we're working together and learning to lean on you, suddenly something begins to happen. Suddenly, we start seeing you in a whole different light. Suddenly, we learn that there is hope, that there is help. We learn, God, that we don't have to control things. We learn, Lord, that you are in control. We also learn, Lord, that we do have responsibilities. Lord, you have provided a, a way of salvation. Mm. And that, Lord, that we can be secure in that salvation. And because we are secure, we can seek you, and we can seek to find out what it is that you would have us to do how it is that we should serve. Lord, the word says that we should serve you with gladness. Help us, Lord, when we find ourselves grumbling, complaining, because it seems like the load is too heavy. Lord, whether, whether we're laity or whether we're clergy, Lord, whether we're singers or whether we're hummers, or Lord, whether we play an instrument, whether we don't, Lord, let us do everything to please you. Let us learn, Lord, to truly lean upon you in all that we do, and certainly, Lord, through this Advent season. <laughs> it, it sounds cliche, Lord, but it's not. You are the reason. It's not just nice, rhyming words in a poem, but this season is all about you. It's a season of hope, a season of help, a season of liberty. Let us learn to lean on you as we look forward to that great and blessed hope, even the appearing of our Lord and Savior on the second time around. And may all of our loved ones come to know you. May they see us as a, an example of how to follow. 
in Jesus' name. Learning to lean, learning to lean, I'm learning to lean on Jesus, finding more power than I'd ever seen, I'm learning to lean. I was sad and broken hearted and I knelt at the cross. I found a peace that was so serene. And all that he asks is a childlike faith and a heart that is learning to lean. Everybody, Amen. learning. 